Uh, hello, my name is Leah and I am a trans activist from Lebanon. I am currently working with the AM Coalition as a project coordinator. Uh, the AM Coalition is the only regional advocacy network specifically devoted to the health needs of the LGBTQ plus in the MENA region. Uh, one of our main goals uh, here is to raise visibility uh, amongst trans issues in the region and to show these issues more publicly and but sadly the, the trans movement is shy because we are forced to be in a hostile and conservative region. Because of this, the trans issues have always been tackled by people who aren't trans and we are currently working to change that. Uh, it's an honor to, to have this time here with you and I hope in my time I would give you an overview about the trans situation in the area. Uh, there are several points that I'm going to discuss with you and the first point is uh, trans visibility in the MENA region. So, uh, the point the first point we're going to discuss is uh, trans visibility in the MENA region. Trans visibility in the MENA region has always been a problem because even without the wider LGBT movement, trans individuals have always been discriminated and always been marginalized. Although now it's getting better, in general, trans communities in the MENA region are like small patches of islands throughout the, throughout the region and they don't have the proper representation and they don't have the proper organization to do that. All that, um, some organizations have started to set up uh, and coalition has made huge strides when it comes to trans individuals, uh, uh, especially around health and uh, sexual health as well. Uh, there are some few regional uh, initiatives, trans initiatives that are worth mentioning. Uh, first of all, there's the M Coalition that has a trans program since 2018. And we have made work and contracts to, throughout the region. Right now, we are working on a trans needs assessment in the region, which is uh, basically we are seeking to understand what the trans need for the first time in the Arab world, what these people are actually need. So this study has been launched, we are now in the process of writing the report and we hope that this would give us like a proper understanding and uh, to what these people actually are suffering. And it's also worth to mention that this study has been done by trans individuals from all together, from, from the participants, from the data collectors, from the people who are working on the report. All of them are actually trans individuals. Uh, other, the, other initiatives that happened in the area were actually during the past few years in uh, the regional convention for the LGBT plus organizations in the area. Uh, it's called NEDWA and it has been hosted by the Arab Foundation of Equality, AFE. So within these, uh, within these conferences in 2018 and 2019, uh, they had three conferences for trans individuals and these conferences were able to gather trans activists from all of the MENA region. It's also uh, noticeable to say that from eight participants that, uh, that were in November 2018, uh, they were raised to 15 participants in uh, 2019. And we hope, uh, hopefully, in the future, this number would have increased even more. And uh, the second point I'm going to discuss is the challenges for the trans right movements in the MENA region. All now that there are some, like there are some great strides that actually happen. Uh, trans issue is still a major problem here because first of all, uh, we do not have proper rights as citizens. Uh, our legal situation is bad. 
uh, we have lack of actual rights, even within our own countries. Uh, there is always uh, discrimination against us, and uh, basically we don't even have the basic civil rights that we have. For example, if I want to have, or any other trans individual who wanted to have their documentation fixed, their ID fixed, uh, even any kind of government paper, uh, sometimes uh, like they would rather not to go. Because simply, simply because they are afraid of being harassed, of being discriminated, of being bullied in these centers, and even if you want to change our papers legally, first of all, in some areas, it's, uh, you can't do that. You can't even change your legal papers. In other areas, uh, even if they actually allow you to change your papers, it is an agonizing and painful process, which is even close to impossible when it comes to changing your uh, your legal idea, your legal papers, and your legal documentation. And uh, with the bureaucracy and the humiliating process that you have to see judges, and lots of people just like to say that you just don't want to go through that. And it's very humiliating. There's also another problem, which is the stigma against trans people. Uh, trans people are stigmatized in this society for many things. And this, this stigma has caused the trans individuals to suffer from mental health issues, to lack of employment, and discrimination. So lots of these, uh, especially trans women, lots of uh, these trans individuals are actually forced into working in the sex field and into the sex work. And in the MENA region, it is prominent, it is a lot. And the culture basically is very conservative. So that has been one of the major stigmas that trans people are actually facing. And this stigma is. The thing is, when it comes to the societies in the MENA region, uh, because they're very conservative, so usually everything which is not similar to their ideas, it automatically becomes stigmatized and it becomes uh, marginalized and even sometimes it can lead to the person, to the person who is different from their surroundings to actually be prosecuted or to even be heard. So, and in the MENA region, we don't have the specific services actually legally to fill this gap. Uh, there's also the major information problem that we are actually facing, especially when it comes to tra trans health, when it comes to hormones, when it comes to transition, when it comes to uh, the surgeries, uh, the affirmation surgeries, and all of the all of the, the steps that trans individuals that they need to to go, sadly they don't even exist in Arabic. They're not available in Arabic, which is very crucial because we are start we have just started to actually create this information available to people to read in Arabic, but it's still still very shy, it's still in its beginning, and it's still very small. So, and we still need to work on that. And this actually, it's not just for the people, for the trans individuals themselves to read these kind of things, especially when it comes to health, also to talk about the providers, the, the health providers that they are dealing with trans. They have lack of understanding about this issue, like, Totally, they don't even understand what's the difference, the basic concept be between sex and gender. So, if a trans woman, let's say, would go to a uh, to see a doctor, would go to uh, to do a regular checkup or whatsoever, usually she is treated as a man, not as a trans woman, even if she was taking hormones, and uh, because they they don't understand what's the difference between gender. What's the difference between sex? And in the MENA region, 
uh, it is very hard to do legal transition. So even in the country that there are doctors who are willing to do these operations, usually they're they they're, they're usually unaware of what they're doing. They're usually experimenting with the with the people they are doing. They're providing the surgery to. Uh, they are doing unhumane work. They are butchering, basically. Them. They are experimenting on their organs, and because it's illegal, no one can even raise a case against these doctors. And even if a case was raised. It usually leads to the trans individuals to be prosecuted, and it's, you know, we don't have anything to actually like try to to prevent these kind of things. Now we're trying as much as to as much as we can you know, to say to people, listen, you have to be careful. People are careful, but sometimes people are also desperate, so they would do anything to go and see these people to to, to see these butchers, these doctors. And they can't even say anything uh, in case the, the operation went wrong. And it's usually they are the victims of these kind of things. And there's no legal protection for them when it comes to that. Uh, there's also another problem, which is there's no support for trans individuals in the MENA region for potential health issues like mental health, like testing for STIs, like HIV. And if a trans person is carrying HIV, they are not supported in many national AIDS programs. And they are denied having tested, they are denied having treated in their countries, which is very, very unfortunate. In some areas, we have just started seeing some changes for trans individuals, accessing these uh, treatments, accessing testing and support. It's still shy, but even in these uh, centers, trans are treated as MSM. They are treated as male having sex with male, not as their true identity as trans individuals. So the last point I'm going to, uh, to talk about is opportunities uh, in the MENA region for trans individuals. The, the first point here is capacity building and training. Uh, we have lots of trans individuals in the area who are actually willing to participate and uh, to work for this cause and to actually give these people the proper training and better still, give these people the proper training by other trans individuals. I am pretty sure that in the MENA region we have lots of potentials that can achieve wonders, but they lack the proper training and education and this is basically because lots of them have been kicked out of their family home from a very early age. So they did not have the proper chance to continue their education. Even if they wanted to continue their education later on, uh, they are usually discriminated by educational institution. So a huge portion of them uh, needs proper training needs, uh, they need to be given the chance to actually able to, to achieve higher education. And by training them and by, by working on capacity building for these trans individuals in the MENA region, I'm pretty sure that we can actually change that sort of thing. Another thing here is to improve the access of services and information. Uh, one of the things that we need to happen, it needs to happen in two ways. Uh, educating the, the, current health, uh, the current health providers, basically, and uh, how to support trans individuals. And make sure that trans individuals also know what options are available to them. Uh, very few services providers have the proper outreach and the proper strategies to the LGBTQ+. For example, some organizations uh, have been giving social trainings for service pro uh, providers, which has shown that it's very helpful. Uh, firstly, they used to deal with trans individuals, especially trans women, as MSM, and they used to treat them as male. As but well, after SOGI and after understanding the difference between sex, between uh, gender, and having the proper 
education and their proper training, uh, it has changed. And so now uh, they are not using, they are not as they used to, to deal with trans individuals as MSM. Now they are actually dealing with them as trans individuals. In some, communi in some communities, there is also better understanding of dangers of unsubscribed hormones, which is a major issue because in the, the MENA region, uh, like reaching hormones is very easy, especially when it comes to pills. And uh, yeah, it's still very low, but many are still self medicating themselves without doctor supervision. So they would rather not go through HRT or if they want to, they would self medicate them. And we know the implementation of actually taking hormones without the doctors uh, following up with it, their patient. This can cause huge problems, but because they don't, but so they don't have any other alternatives. So we need to actually work on uh, improving this. The last point is actually mobilization of the trans community. Uh, what we need to see is more trans people mobilized and uh, start to, uh, to, uh, to present their communities in a better way, to understand what they're talking about, because no one is better to actually represent another individual like another trans individual is not going to actually be able to, uh, to represent another trans individual than a trans individual themselves. So we are seeing more of that, uh, especially with the technology which is happening, with the spread of the internet, being able to connect uh, through, uh, throughout the whole areas and to understand the difference between these, uh, these, uh, these, these uh, separate islands. We are starting to work on connecting them, but still very shy. And we actually need to, to work further on this and to establish better networks in connecting these, uh, these islands together into one big community in the MENA region. Uh, we need to do more of this and we are seeing mobilization happening in the region. And as a part of the period, it is increasing and I'm very happy with that. And hopefully we are, we're going to be, you know, we can be able to actually start building trans organizations from grassroots up and uh, we have a better solidarity, a better display of solidarity amongst the trans, uh, amongst the, the trans community here in the Mina region. And thank you for your time and I hope that was enough. And again, thank you for giving me this opportunity. And